Hello and welcome to GMC Motorhome episode 27, Preparing for Camping. What we're gonna do right now, just because we're curious, is we're gonna hook our 230 amp hour battery up to our inverter and turn on the big air conditioner and see how long it runs for and monitor the um, battery. Action. All right, this thing here does not have um, anything to hold it up. All right, so this plug here is going to my electric in my camper. And this over here is my inverter. So now I'm gonna take, no, I'm not. I gotta take this off of here. All right, that's my 50 amp input. That's my inverter. Let's plug this together. Okay, then, over here and we'll turn inverter on. It's been a long time. Let's see if inverter comes on. Come on, inverter. Oh, there it is. Okay. So inverter is on. Now, um, and what we can do is we can come back and check how many amps it's drawing. Well, this will be interesting. We'll find out how many amps it's drawing and then do calculations. Okay. Turn this on. a medium fan. Now let's turn the compressor on. All right, so our compressor's on. Now our air conditioning is running off our 230 amp hour battery and our solar panels. So now let's go back and look at the, uh, the thing and see how many amps we're drawing. You going? Yes. Okay, so you can see we're pulsating there at about 120 amps. So at 230 amp hours, I mean, that, that would, it should run for about two hours at 120 amps. Um, so we're gonna see, and we're gonna monitor battery. Let's go back inside and see what the battery is saying it's at. Okay, so our battery is at 93%. It's bouncing around here. It says 86%, 80%. I don't think it could be going down that much. Now it's back up to 95%. So what we're gonna, well, that's because we're also charging from the sun, so it's probably getting very confused. We're taking in probably a full 400 watts right now. So anyway, so we'll monitor this and see what we got. All right, so we've been running for about 10 minutes. It's nice and cool in here. It is only about 85 outside, but it's definitely quite pleasant. We're all cleaned back up here and a couple little things up there. So we started running this at 10, 10, it's 10, 20, it's been 10 minutes. All right, so I've cleaned these solar panels up. Still running nicely. This will be better for the test to have these things clean. So here's a good visualization. So we've got the latest picture shows around 113 watts and eight or nine amps. The sun is over there. It's, I don't want to go directly into it, but it's it's up behind that tree a little bit and kind of catching that at an angle. That's that side. Let's go on the other side. I love this new paint job. Oh, now the sun's really just come out. All right, I'm going to take another, insert another picture. All right, 
right, so I don't understand exactly what's going on with all these numbers. Um, the battery, I don't know. It reads different things, and the voltage reads different things, and the amps read different things, and the watch read different things. The last one, I thought it was neat that it showed 27, was it 27 amp hours for the day? I don't know. Anyway, um, we're just going to let this thing run and see how long it runs for. Uh, right now we're at about 25 minutes. It's running fine. The battery keeps fluctuating between 80 and 90 percent, so I don't know what's going on with that, but um, we'll see what happens. Maybe this uh, um, AC just is only using, might be using 10 amps or something. And so if it was only using 10 amps or 11 amps, which it might be, uh, it's not using 20 or 30 amps, it's pretty efficient. So does that mean if you divide that by 230 amp hours, it's gonna run for uh, 20 hours? I mean, I, I don't know, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, clearly I don't understand it. Uh, so somebody can comment on here and explain what's going on, but we're just gonna look at real time. We're gonna run this thing until the battery uh, says it's down to nothing and we'll see how that works so I guess the easiest thing though for me to understand is that's drawing according to this 120 amps at 14 volts or 13 volts or whatever it is and that's what's being drawn out of the battery so if that is the case then the battery should last a couple hours um, but it is getting recharged by the solar panels so that might extend it and I guess my thought is is that if it can run for an hour and a half, let's say it's a hot day and we have an hour and a half drive in this thing, or a two hour drive, maybe since my coach AC isn't working at the moment, and it will be, trust me, um, maybe we can just run the roof AC with the battery. I've also thought about buying a generator and sticking it on the back rack and running that to power my roof AC while we're driving down the road so these are all options i'm exploring at the moment meanwhile in here it is downright pleasant i wish i had well let's see if the let's see if this tells me what temperature it is well that thing is 80 degrees but it's definitely not 80 degrees in here that's working there's no way it's 80 degrees, but whatever. Let's see if that actually ever goes down or goes up. Um, okay. Okay, so outside it's 89. Inside it's a nice cool 72. Uh, you also saw where we were taking in about 250 watts solar energy now so that says let's say that says 73 it's not 75 that's for sure let's see what this one says back here now that still says 80 so that's that's just wrong uh, so anyway but we're still going let's go in here and see what this says see if this is giving us a different reading says it's 100% 97% I don't know what's going on here I don't understand how this is monitoring because now we've been going for almost an hour I don't know if I've got enough watts now from the Sun <laughs> I don't get it but all I know is it's nice and cool in here we're running off our battery and our solar and we're running that air conditioner so there you go and it's been almost an hour Okay, it's still 75 in here. It got a couple degrees hotter, but now outside it's got to be like 95 degrees. I just closed that. I probably should have my sunshade around there just to help, um, which is in that bag there, but anyway, it's not in there. So we're still going. Let's look in here and see. We're pulling up, getting close to two hours now. Okay, 80%, oh, 84%, this is what it does, but 83%, uh, 
So maybe it's really settling more into an 80-ish kind of thing. Um, let's see if it drops to 79. That would be a first, well, just shut off again. Yeah, anyway, well, so, still running here. So now it's, you just saw the thing I took a picture of. That's just uh, showing you that we're taking in about 250 watts because the sun is in the top of the sky now. You can see it out my, the back window, it's quite bright. Um, and we're two hours in and we still seem to be rolling. So it's just amazing. Uh, and I guess, um, I'm going to go do the other side. I'm going to go eat something, go eat some lunch. And then after then I'll probably come out here and turn it off, let everything cool off. I'm going to go put my hand on the inverter and see how that feels. See if that feels hot. So here we are. These are inside access panel. Uh, the inverter is down in there, and I don't know if you can hear it on this camera, probably not, but the, um, the, the fan is working, so it's trying to cool itself. Uh, I touched it, it's not, uh, it's not, you know, it's not like burning, I mean, it's a little warm, but it's not even, it's, not, it's, it's warm, but it's not hot. So, and it's a 5,000 watt inverter, I've got these big giant zero gauge cables coming from the battery let me see if they see if i can reach see if they are all warm um again they're a little warm but not i'm touching the terminal right now that terminal is a little hot i think what i'll do i mean it's not i mean it's not burning hot i'm touching it so anyway, here comes Michelle to see what's happening. Who does not wish to be videotaped at the moment. So we're gonna let this run another few minutes and we'll probably shut it off. It's demonstrated it can run for at least two hours. I got plenty of battery left, um, but why stress anything? It's nice and cool in here and it appears to be holding at this nice cool temperature. So I guess that has demonstrated that even on a ride, we can run that for a couple hours. And then I want to see how soon my battery gets back up to 100%. Okay, if you look at that last picture, you see it's now two. So in less than two hours, the battery's back uh, to 100% charge. So uh, what I'm thinking is, is if we're driving down the road, I can run that uh, and it's a sunny day, I can run that AC while we're driving, get to our campsite, shut it off, and then charge up for the night. Now, when I'm driving though, normally I've got the refrigerator running too. So that would throw, could throw a monkey wrench into this. So we'll see in real time what happens. Anyway, that's, that's enough for that. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set the timing and set the, uh, idle uh, because we're knocking a little bit I got the timing advanced and then we're gonna drive this uh, back and forth to work one of these days this week and I'll film that and it'll be seamless um, and we'll see how it does and then then I think we're gonna be that's really all I have to do before we go camping again so uh, uh, timing uh, and carburetor and um, road test all right, so I just got some gas. We're driving along. Um, this, there's a little bit of noise, but it's, it's, I think it's normal. It's, it's really not bad at all. In fact, I don't think I'm hearing, I might be hearing bearing noise or something, or, but it, it's, it's pretty quiet. It runs smooth and great. This final drive, it's just night and day. When you step on the gas, I mean, it kind of gets up and goes. It's really nice. I got my timing all set now, so I got no knocking. The engine is just fantastic. I'm gonna pull in and see my friends who helped put this together in a second here. 
I did not do the speedometer test, uh, but I have a speedometer app on my phone, and basically when it becomes time to um, do that, I'll just put my speedometer app on. So here we are now, we're driving along. We've got a nice visit with the uh, roof AC on, hooked up to my inverter. Very pleasant. Um, the bane of my existence now is this fuel gauge, which now reads totally empty. So I'm still gonna have to keep messing with that. Uh, I've got new sending units, and what I did is I directly hard, I, I bypassed the switch there, at least for the fuel sending wire, just coming off the main tank. I took it to the gas station. I added 17 gallons of gas. And let's see here. Now I've got my, let's see here. Had the rear brake stick for a second there. I just added 17 gallons of gas and it, was, it, it filled up to the tank. So we know we're full now, so now I gotta mess with that fuel gauge a little more and hopefully sort that out. But boy, it's just driving great. When I was at the gas station, I backed off the uh, timing a little more. I hear a teeny weeny weeny, it might even not even be a knock noise. That's the thing at this point. The engine is just running great final drives it's actually quite a down some I, I think it's totally fine talk to the guys at the station and with that gear ratio they said it's gonna make a little bit of wine on deceleration they said it's not abnormal so we're gonna go with that as long as it doesn't get any worse I'll drive around you know 100 miles or so before we go on the camping trip and then I will drain the uh, fluid out of the differential and see what that looks like. So now we're gonna go home and relax. So I woke up this morning and I kept thinking about these brakes. They've never ever been right. And when I first got the coach, I couldn't bleed the brakes. And so I thought it was the proportioning valve. So I got a PV2. Now many of you probably know where this conversation is gonna go. So I got the PV2 instead of the PVMH that applied supplies and Jeff Serum supplies and put that on there. And then because I didn't have the proper pigtail, I put my, um, the sensor from the old proportioning valve in there. Kind of thought nothing of it. The brakes, I, I bought a brake bleeder tool. I was able to bleed the brakes and I had brakes and they all worked when it was up in the air and it was great. But it always felt like I was fighting it. I'm thinking to myself, if I was a little old lady driving this thing, I'd be pressing awfully hard to get it to stop. So, uh, in the middle of the night, of course, I woke up and realized that the first thing I had done wrong was probably use the older sensor in the new proportioning valve because they're two completely different units and not designed to work together. And then the second thing I realized is I've also used the wrong proportioning valve. And that is because the PBMH exists and it's because a lot more pressure on the motorhome PV2 version thing that's called the PVMH goes to the rear brakes. And that would make sense and that would make this thing stop a lot better, I'm sure. It would also probably cause my rear brakes from sticking occasionally because I believe the orifice that goes to the rear brakes is much smaller and maybe somehow it's it's fighting. Anyway, long story short, I'm gonna do this. I'm going to put the stock unit back on, which I've, you know, I'm getting fluid going through here and coming out there and going in there or going in there, I'm not sure which one it's going in. I guess it's coming out there and there and going in there. Anyway, I got fluids flowing through this thing. So I'm gonna put this back on, use my bleeding tool in here and bleed these brakes. And then I'm gonna see what happens. And I bet you it's gonna stop a whole lot better, but I guess we're gonna find out. So I'm gonna swap these out. 
I believe the expression is out with the new and in with the old. So now we'll see how this does. We'll get our wire over here. Put that back on. So this line I'll have to bleed. These ones I let gravity bleed down to here. It sort of dripping. Then I gravity bled that there and I gravity bled that there. And I believe because everything's going up, we shouldn't have gotten the air in those. So I think it's just going to be this front one, but we'll check it now. Okay. Let's see what it feels like. Interesting. Definitely feels different. So far, I've driven it and hit the brakes hard several times and not had any sticking. I guess what will happen is uh, it'll stick or it won't stick. And if it sticks again, then I know that the problem is in the wheel somewhere. And then require a lot of pressure uh, with my foot. So the feel is the same, but the stopping is much better. That's an easy way to sum it up. So <clears throat> what we have to do next is in this bathroom here, when I installed this light, I noticed that right up there, there was a little break in that shower line. So we're gonna fix that shower line and then the other thing we have to do before we go camping, although we just bought a small electric heater, we're going to have power, is I'm going to pull the furnace out of there and uh, see if I can get the fan to quiet down. So um, anyway, let's go look behind this light in there. And what I did, by the way, is I just, I don't know if I ever went over it, but I made these plates here and I put these LEDs on here all kinds of different settings on them so and then they're controlled by the same switch so all right so let me get this off of here and let's look in there and see what that uh, line looks like okay so here's this pretty accessible so I'll cut this off right about there and right about there and then see, you know, hopefully this will be a more standard size than the other stuff. I believe it'll be three eighths and I can put a normal compression fitting on it, hopefully. So we will see, uh, but I'm gonna cut that piece off of there. And <clears throat> the only way I discovered this was Michelle insisted that I put these fancy lights in, which I was fighting. Of course, now I'm glad I did because they're way nicer than the old lights that were in there. Um, and then I looked in there and saw that, and that would have been something that it's small enough where we would, I'd have been taking a shower and it'd have been spitting water in here. And so anyway, all right, so let me cut that out. Okay, how lucky is that? that this was where it was. I'm able to fit this in here. I took a cutoff wheel and cut that in half, and then I could sort of start moving this around. This spins with that there, so we can definitely get this close enough to put a certainly a compression fitting on there might put a valve on there just because maybe you know it'll a, take up more space and just give me one more option um i don't know why i would need to shut it off but so that's that so as is tradition we've gone and gotten a three eighths compression fitting to put this together and this is also slightly too big it's like that other plumbing in here so i'm going to attempt to make some sort of device on my drill that's got sandpaper inside a socket so i can take the edge off this and see if we can get that down to a size where it fits um, that's a compression fitting or up there 
I imagine I could take a uh, that's stuck. I should probably just replace this whole thing and that whole thing and run a new line. I'm gonna investigate what it would involve to run a whole new line versus trying to bring this down to where it'll fit because we're we're pretty far off here. We have to take a lot of material off of there. So let's see what we got. So the question becomes, once I take this off, is this fitting going to be a standard fitting that I can put a different compression fitting on from a regular piece of 3 8 copper? Um, so let me go into the sink and see about getting that out of there and see what sort of fitting we have here and maybe we can just replace this whole thing with plastic. So this is a rubber hose going from there back into the copper line. And really, if I just wanted to do something easy, I could use the same rubber hose and put some hose clamps on it, put it behind there, and probably call it a day. And maybe, honestly, is that the best thing to do because I am going to go through a whole lot of stuff and I'm not going to be using this shower that often. It probably makes more sense to do that. First of all, this is in a loop here that's binding. So I guess you've got water going to it and then coming back out of it. I think maybe I'll do that. I'll just run this tube back down to that. Cut this off, put a couple more hose clamps on it, tighten the crap out of it, and see what we got. Well, what do we think? That's tight as crap. That's tight as crap. Um, that's what was underneath the sink for God knows how many years, and so we put a little piece there, and why not? So I'll, I'll put some water in this thing, I'll hook this hose back up, and we'll see any water comes out of here um, there's our little knob that was taped up so people wouldn't do that and we'll see what happens I'm gonna fill up the water tank and put this all back together down here uh, you can see in here a little better there is that piece that's now just straight up and down that was in there, but it formed a loop. So I used a piece of that tubing and uh, it was good enough for under there. So I think it'll be good enough for uh, up, up there. Okay, so we gotta fill the water up. That's, that's something we have to do before we go camping. Let's go look at the, hmm. I don't think it's full. I think that there's uh, not enough air getting into the tank. Let's see. Yeah. So I need to slow this rate of flow down a little bit. My vent tube appears to be clogged here. I can't get any air through that, so I gotta sort out what's going on with that. That's why I'm having trouble filling this tank. Filling up in there. Why this thing is clogged, I don't know. So I'm gonna take that off and see what's going on with that while we fill up here. So I'm letting it vent out the top there while we continue to fill up here. I'm gonna take that hose off and see what's up with that. There is literally a mud dauber nest in my line, so we're going to clean that out. How that actually, I mean, that's ridiculous that that's where they got into and made a nest. But, you know, whatever. So that explains that. Okay, so that was a good thing to do before we went camping. Because if I had been trying to fill this up and figuring out why water's shooting out at the campsite, that would have sucked. So we are, it's like we're right about here with our water. We got a little more to go. I'm going to 
I guess that's really not going to technically overflow. I mean, it's going to overflow out of both of them when it's full. Uh, as long as it doesn't come back into here, which it should not. So we're going to finish filling this up and close this back up. And then we are going to test our shower function. Okay. Turn that on. Then pull this. water going up in there that sounds like I don't see anything leaking leaking up there hmm I'm gonna try to get this unfrozen and see what happens here um, yeah let's try to get that's very I can't even move that so all right, take two. There's your water. See it going in there. Why is it not coming out here? And why does it sound like it's running? Aha, we we're squirting everywhere. So just because it was good enough for the last guy, I got water squirting out at the top here because it can't come out my my shower hose. So we're going to take it apart and do it right. The hose method, although it worked up there, does not seem to be working under here. And I guess I could maybe try and put more hose and clamps and stuff on there. But um, I'm going to get that fitting off and see if I can't make this thing function properly and reliably. Okay, so what I decided to do is I've got a new compression fitting here that fits on our old fitting, so that's good. And then we're just using new nominal normal size uh, 3 8 copper so I can flare this end and we can run a new line um, and the other thing I'm going to do is when I run this line I'm going to see if I can't go straight down here come across here and then go over there because it'll be more inside the camper and less likely to freeze. Um, now, obviously, that's a problem in the winter, so we need to do a really good job of re-insulating this whole area here. Um, this is just the drain line that goes through here, but it's still a lot of cold air that's gonna be coming up through here, so I am gonna pack, once I get all this stuff sorted out, just jam a bunch of rocks wool in there or something. Okay, use my flaring tool there, put my new end on, flare my end, I'm going to screw that up underneath that sink on that side, and then we'll get this side sorted out, and I got the line coming down right straight through there now. Alright, so there is the new fitting coming down, across, and then we're going up to there, so now we're going to flare that in. Okay, there's my flare. That'll be good. Okay. So what do we got? Here's our water. And we're gonna pull this out. There's our shower. Very nice. A couple little drips from there, but that's okay because it's within the bathroom area. I don't see anything coming out of there. And then, that's all dry as a bun under there. So there's our new shower line. I'm gonna put all this back together here. I'm not sure actually if this is gonna get in the way now of this, but I'll 
of this thing. So let's find out that next. Okay, so our bathroom's all back together. Our shower's now working with a brand new piece of copper pipe all the way to the sink that doesn't leak and does not have rubber and hose clamps on it. So that is good. So now we're going to turn that off. The next item on the agenda is going to be our furnace up there. Okay, now we got to go and get the scooter running as part of getting ready for camping. You got it. You're just gonna lie here on the couch and relax, aren't you? Oh, you like that? Yes. My big wolfhound boy. And then there's this guy. He's also gonna have a very strenuous day. Okay, here's, there's that rooster. Okay, so the problem with this thing is always it's been sitting forever and then the carburetor gets clogged up because of the gas, it eats into the rubber and blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna take these covers off and we'll get to the carburetor and see what happens. So I have fuel on these, this line here. This is my vacuum line that opens up this pedcock that gives me fuel down here and I can see because of this clear line that there's, there's fuel in there. So I will, I'm sure my float is stuck, so I will have to pull this carburetor off and get that unstuck. Or maybe I can just turn it slightly and anyway, I got to take off the other side, so. All right, so there's fuel in the bowl. There's a little bit of crap in there. So I'm going to take out the main jet and the pilot jet and clean that. And that usually does it for this thing. So um, that's what's going to happen there. This is a 10 gauge banjo string that I use to clear out little holes and things. All right, so you can see the green gook on the pilot jet and there's no visible hole there. So we'll clean that off, squirt the hole out in the carburetor and clean that off. I got my string or my um, yeah, guitar string through there. There we go, 1985, it's just, uh, the fuel just keeps gunking that carburetor up if it sits too long, so anyway, what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll ride it a few times uh, in the next couple days before we take it, make sure it's all good so that when we get there we can just hit the button and start it up. Back to holding air for half an hour, so I think that's going to be no worse than it was before. Uh, maybe better, we'll see. But meanwhile, we got our scooter. This was something we had to get done before camping. So, turn it on. All right, I'm going to go for a ride. So getting back to fuel gauge, the tank is full now. I know that when I turn this on, it says full, but there's the, the line is not hooked up. The electric isn't hooked up to the fuel sending unit. Back here, this wire goes to the sending unit. When I plug it into there, now we're going down to empty like it's grounded out. Um, as if it's empty. So for some reason that line is now grounding somewhere. So what I'm going to do is this line was cut and spliced when I bought the motorhome. The other fuel sending line is this tan one right there. So I'm going to cut this and plug that into here and see what happens okay so now i'm on we're reading full and we've got our other line hooked in there so we won't know if this is working until we start burning some fuel but so far so good 
Now, you say, well, now I can't go back and forth. Well, the thing is, is that the fuel tanks are connected together. So really, if you can read one, you're reading the other until about the last five gallons, and you really don't want to let it go down below half a tank anyway. We also know that when it's full, which it is, we have 50 gallons in there, I'm going camping 100 miles away. So if I get eight miles to the gallon, that means it's going to take me about, you know, 12 or 13 or 14 gallons or whatever it is um, to get there. And we can certainly look at our odometer too and see, I mean, we're going to know that it's 100 miles. So if we get there, then what I'll do before I leave is I'll fill the tank again until it tops off. And this way we use the mileage method, method but, but it'll be neat to see if that thing actually starts working. And we won't know until uh, this road trip. So I'm going to put this dash cover back on, which really only has one screw holding it on. I'm just going to leave that screw off in case I need to get in there. And uh, so we'll consider that now done. That cover is loose from the last time. And what I was doing was um, reaching in, turning on the valve, you know, lighting the pilot light, turning it on, made a bunch of noise. I'm going to pull it out of there. Um, it worked. I'm going to pull it out of there and see if I can get the fan so that it's not hitting anything so it runs quietly. And then I'm going to replace the on off valve just and maybe move it to where it's more accessible um and uh make it easier to turn it on and off because it's very inaccessible and it's very hard to turn on and off now it's very we're steep. gonna have power where we're camping and we're gonna bring a small electric heater so if it drops down to we're gonna go to pennsylvania so if it drops down this is a week from now to 50 or something or you know maybe it'll maybe it'll go down to 40 degrees um or whatever it is I want to have the option to use my propane heater to toast us up in the morning like we did at Dell Fest in May. It was pretty chilly in the morning in that camper, this camper. Um, so that's going to be the final thing. Uh, and this afternoon, I've got to go run an errand now that I'm going to get back. We're going to take this uh, thing for a ride before we mess with the heater uh, to get it on the highway and see how that does. We are going to remove the... One, two, three, this one's already out. Four screws. Okay, next I'm gonna take that off my gas valve. So, yes. Uh, I almost forgot, you gotta take this out. So that, take that out there. Okay, I got my valve loose inside, let's slide this thing out. Okay, this fan here, that's quiet. What I'm thinking is that the induction motor probably has because I was hearing some clanging and banging and there is this mud dauber nest in there I imagine it's got some crap in there and I guess we're gonna have to take this whole thing apart and I noticed this in here is not really soldered on it's kind of just twisted on there so we'll make a few improvements on this heater before we stick it back in okay so this is gonna sit here now uh, for a day or two and then I'm gonna do a full service to it looks like I gotta get way into it um, but I want to take it all apart and clean everything out and, and put it back together uh, all cleaned up We're going on the highway now so my speedometer now says 60 how fast does the speedometer app say we're going 56 57 okay now we're going like 58 65 Right, so it's not that bad. So if I cruise it, what speed are we going right now? 57. 56, okay. 57. That's fine. 58 is fluttering. So that means that I want to go 65 on this speedometer. That's our cruising speed. This is 55 is fine. It's very comfortable. And the engine is tacking about 2,600 RPM which is what it would normally be doing when you're going, now how fast are we going? 58, 59, 60. Okay, so 68 miles on here is 60. So we definitely don't want to exceed 70 miles an hour on our stocks but up. Um, meanwhile, I'm not knock on wood. I mean, I, I don't hear anything funny with the, uh, with the 
final drive. It sounds fine. So, okay, so that takes care of that. All right, so the clanging is all this stuff in here, and there was stuff down there. There's a wasp butt sticking out of there. This was all filled. So now we're just going to vacuum this out. I'll probably take this off as well and clean in there. All right. Somebody's got these wires just twisted on here, so we're going to solder them so we don't have any arcing and blowing up. Okay, so those are soldered on. They got a bit hot, so I wanted to make sure this is still working, which it does. It's my fan switch, so that's good. So, all right, so we're gonna button this thing back up, put it back in the can. Okay. My furnace working again. Nice toasty air coming out of here. It's not clanging. Still a little loud, but you know it, it works. It's not, it doesn't have all the clangs and bangs. And I guess if I had this cover on here, and then I have it coming out the vents, then it would be quieter. But I don't like how so much heat comes, it hits the back of this. Then it goes down there, and then it goes out there and there. It seems like it just, this is a safer way to do it, less hot, but I'll put the cover on, see what it does. But it's much, much quieter. That's extremely tolerable, so I'm very happy with that. Okay, so that's done. All right, I'm gonna get my scooter rail out here. It's my old dirt bike rail. Uh, it's been sitting around, as you can see, but I'll get the other part out of the garage, put it on here. Okay, so I've had this thing for like 20 years, and it's neat because it tilts. You roll your bike up on there, drops down. You can see all this rust and crap. This pin then goes in here, and this is a, at the moment, a two-man job. I have to push down over there, but I can't do it while filming, but that's how that goes in and that's in there and that's it here's your so my scooter's gonna go and then what would be interesting is to see what kind of room is left over back here because it looks like after my scooter goes in there i still might be able to put some stuff uh back in here i almost should make a custom deal for this where this still goes up and down but I have something coming out from here and maybe it attaches to there but then also can hang over the bumper and get some support so that's something to figure out how to make at some point so that's hitch buddy so that's another thing done before we go camping so I, I'm really running out of stuff to do but uh, if I think of anything else I'll keep putting it on here until I finish this video. All right, so we got this Drio heater. It's running now. This thing, I can't believe the amount of heat that it's putting out. It's super quiet. It's cranking out a bunch of heat, so uh, I don't know how many watts it's supposed to be. It's, we're gonna take this shelf, put it up there, put our heater on it. But that's the idea is that at night we'll open this like this. And now we've created, I mean, obviously there's a little space there and a space there, but it'll create a small area to heat. But it's, uh, it's getting toasty in here right now. So uh, when we're at the campground, we're going to be plugged in and we can use that as heat. So we don't have to worry about propane and this of course will have a thermostat on and I got to read the directions but uh, it's on high right now I don't know what I'm doing here probably shouldn't mess with it oh that's timing let's turn 
this thing off. I guess it, what it does is then it cools down and that turns off. So anyway, but it's gonna be it's it's nice back here already. So all right, so that's our heater, and then. PTC fan heater. Anyway, I'm already giving this product a thumbs up. Squeezing in another day of boating. Got a nice meal. Leisurely heading back to the marina. Couple more minor things to do when I think about them on the camper, and then uh, a few days be going camping. Heat level temperature done. Okay. In addition to the scooter, I had to get my bike ready. This brake was dragging over here. This was um, on the brake, but when you tighten this, it. There's a, let's see here. So this pulls the brake this way. And when you tighten that little screw, it keeps it further off this little cam here. And so it was rubbing and now it's centered. See this way it rubs. But now that needs just the right amount of, anyway, so that was done. That's a little thing that I discovered. So now that's done. We're really getting pretty far down the list here. Okay. Just putting a couple last odds and ends in here. And then we're off. Got everything all set up in here. We're going to take the small doggy with us this time. That all made back in here. Refrigerator's running. This should probably go in here. All right. So getting ready for camping is done. Now let's see if we can actually camp. We'll see you next time.